talk agriculture, it doesn't end in the area of um, farming and of course uh, livestock. Today's program, Agri Today, has brought us to the National Park Services headquarters here in Abuja, where we're looking at the preservation of these uh, plants and animals. Here at the National Park, we will be talking to the Conversator General, who is Dr. Musa. He will be talking to us in the area of um, safety and um, ensuring that uh, most of these wildlife we have here in Nigeria are being conserved and kept properly for uh, you know uh, the interest of tourists and of course uh, for children who would like uh, to know uh, what kind of animals today I'm curious I want to see uh, some animals that I've not seen before even uh, being an adult come with us Yes, the National Park Service is an advanced form of uh, protected area management. In the protected area management, we have six categories. And National Park is on the second category. The concept has been in Nigeria for almost three and a half decades. And uh, Ask anybody National Park, he will tell you, are you referring to the Javi Moto Park? Are you referring to any garage? This is because maybe for, some, for the past there hasn't been much uh, publicity. The, my predecessors maybe were trying to make sure that they put solid foundation, after which they will now start the propaganda of trying to draw the attention of Nigerians to what a national park entails. The national park is different from a forest reserve and a game reserve. The only difference is the management authority. In the case of the national park, the highest legal competent authority of a country, that is the federal government, manages a national park the world over, whether in the US, whether in Asia, whether in any part of Africa. It is the legal competent authority of the country that manages a national park. Whereas game and forest reserves are the uh, entities that are managed by subnational government so when i say subnational it could be local government it could be state yes so that is why places like the famous yankari game reserve is well known because yankari had the buying of the people the people were so proud of it and they were promoting it so what a pro what a protected area does is what a national park does. One, you have to make sure that the plants and animals therein are secured. When they are secured, you now try to bring in visitors and tourists so that they can view what you are doing, what resources you have. So it is the viewing of these resources that has put in countries like Kenya, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, above other countries in Africa. Because that happens to be their 
major economic uh, activity. And in fact, it contributes to their GDP. Unlike what obtains in Nigeria, if you look at the contribution of wildlife, the contribution of national park to the GDP, unless you add up that to the contribution of trade and tourism, you hardly get much about the contribution of uh, national parks to the GDP. Then the third aspect of uh, the management we are doing is for research purposes. Because we have a conglomeration of plants, we have a conglomeration of different animals, and now that the country is talking about uh, Team Cam, that is a uh, alternative uh, traditional medicine, comp tra complementary and traditional medicine. So you see that the management of these plants and animal resources is vital if this complementary traditional medicine should actually be promoted. Because there is no plant that does not have an economic or medicinal value. There is no plant unless research has not discovered it. And there is no animal that has no traditional or medicinal value unless research has not discovered it. You think of so many animal parts. Is it the skin, the fur of, or the hair, or you look at, is it the fat and oil? And uh, of course, fat and oil for animals like snakes, you know, are used to, they are used by these people who join bones to heal fractures and the rest of them and so many. So then the national parks are also centers where science education is imparted into the youths. Daily we have students coming here. Daily we have students undertaking their research projects in our national parks. The essence of the students coming here is because an aspect of their curriculum happens to be maybe ecological studies. So, and uh, there's uh, with the development in the country, urban development, which has increased rural migration, coupled with this insecurity, which has also escalated migration to maybe urban centers. So we realize that there's much encroachment on forest areas, game reserves, and even national parks. So there's therefore not much for any student to view outside the national parks and game reserves. So in a nutshell, this is what we do in, in the national park. We employ different strategies in managing a national park. One or one of the foremost strategy is uh, monitoring the area designated as national park. To do this, we have officers we call rangers that are trained in basic science and even art because national park is both an art and a science. So. These rangers are involved in patrol, just like the police patrol, like the custom patrol. The custom are anti-smuggling. The, the police are anti-crime. In National Park, we are anti-poaching. And when I say we are anti-poaching, poaching does not necessarily mean killing of animals. Poaching means anything you illegally take, you are poached that thing. So our officers are involved in anti-poaching patrols. Through these patrols, during this patrol, they observe the environment. Are the plants doing well? Are there animals? 
are there water that will keep the animals in place. So if these three things are available, the condition of the environment, whether the animals are there, and water. Because the condition of the, anim the environment tells you about the wealthiness of the plant and the other vegetal material. Because some of these animals are either grass eating or leaf eating. For those that are grass eating, we call them grazers. For those that are leaf eating, we call them browsers. So, this must be available in the habitat for the animal to be able to remain there. And when the animals are there, are there invaders coming in? So if there are invaders, these are the people, the officers are trained to keep off so that they do not invade the environment and become nuisance to both the plants and the animals. Another strategy is you have the, these protected areas or this national park, some, most of them are surrounded by the communities. So you needed the buy-in of these communities if you must be successful. Because the communities know themselves. If there is a new arrival, it's known to them. And when you don't carry them along the management, there's no way they can tell you whether there are a group of hunters that have come, there are a group of loggers that have come, there are bandits that have come. So you have to carry them along. That is one strategy. Park community relation. Yes. And uh, you also have to, beyond the communities, you have to sensitize the members of the society. Thank God what your uh, media outfit is doing now is something that will at least take whatever publicity we are doing further so that the Nigerian people will be able to hear what we are doing, listen to what we are doing, and get the appreciation. The moment we start getting the appreciation, it means they are keen into this government project. So this is what countries like Kenya, Tanzania, and the rest of them have done. You go to Kenya today, you go to Tanzania today, Zimbabwe, Uganda, even Cameroon here, you go there, you, say, you mention Bushmi, they will tell you what are you talking about. But today in Nigeria, Bushmi is a delicacy. So this is what we are trying to keep up people's mind. And that is why we need the support of the Federal Ministry of Information and National Orientation to be able to change the psychic of Nigeria. Let us look at these wild animals, not as bush meat. Let us look, let us look at them as something that we can view, we can adopt. Yes, yes, we can adopt and something that we can domesticate. Because game ranching is allowed. You are allowed to come and take a pair of maybe a uh, bush buck, get a very good condi uh, con uh, uh, environment for them behind your houses, behind your house. In a couple of uh, years, because the gestation period is just eight months, in two years you'll have had at least two offspring. So that is game ranching. So with that one, you realize that uh, you are able to domesticate this. Instead of going to the field to kill, you can just get one from your environment. This is why the Federal Ministry of Agriculture is promoting livestock, rabbit tree, and, uh, and the rest. For the Ministry of Agriculture, we have been bedfellows very long time ago. Because even the issue of protection, preservation, was formerly in the Ministry of Agriculture. For you, to have a license to acquire any wild animals in the past, the powers lies in the Ministry of Agriculture. And the Ministry of Agriculture has been supportive of our activities.
because uh, they realize that most of the zoonotic diseases emanate from wild animals. And therefore, they have tried to put us on that board of trying to regulate and mitigate the outbreak of animal diseases. That apart, we have had instances where we have to seek for the assistance of the Ministry of Environment for communities that are surrounding our Ministry of Agriculture, for communities that are surrounding our park areas in the area of sharing or giving them farming inputs. So that when they are engaged, that is where we provide alternative livelihood for them. They will be able to disengage from invading the park and even poaching or illegally taking anything. So we have been very good bedfellows. For the ministry for the ARC. ARCN, Agri Research Council, this is a new ground we have to break. And uh, I intend to visit uh, the yes the director or executive secretary so that at least we, like I said we break new grants. But apart from the ARCN, we have had collaboration with scientific dexes of CITES. When I say CITES, that is the, the convention in Nigeria signed, the convention in illegal trade. Uh, in fauna and flora species, like fisheries. We have been working with them. There are other agencies like uh, uh, NIPRI and the rest of them we have been working together in checkmating illegal trade. Because when you say illegal trade and wildlife, fisheries too, it's a wild, it's wildlife. I to ask that, is fish also part of wildlife? Of course, wow. fisheries is a part of wildlife. Okay. Because unless you decide to get a fish pond, mm. and even when you get a fish pond, you have to habituate the fish. You have to habituate it. If you don't habituate it, even when you put your feed, it will not come. Mm. But with habituation, the, the feed is getting used to hand feeding. Now know that yeah, it is being hand fed, it is being hand fed. So if you don't do that, if you don't habituate it, it will decide to start going. There are algae and the rest of them in the, in the pond. It can survive on them. This is a very, very vital question. And uh, as far as security is concerned in the national parks, this is a thing we are contending with. You cannot run away from it. Because the adjacent forest reserves have been no man's land. There's no national park that does not, that does not share boundary with a forest reserve or a game reserve in this country. You, you look at Kamuku National Park in Benungwari, it shares boundary with uh, uh, Alawa Game Reserve, where the bandits are raining hell on the people of uh, Shiroro and the rest of them in Niger State. It shares boundary with Koyambana in Zamfara State. It shares boundary with Kogo Forest Reserve in Katsina State. So, any infiltration into these areas is infiltration into the National Park. That is why we say it is a thing we are contending with. And thank God, the, gov the government, our interagency collaboration and synergy is actually helping us to at least to contend very well with the situation as we have not allowed them to completely take over and make it a kingdom for themselves. Yes, we have always uh, looked at our contribution to the country's GDP in relation to trade and tourism. Right? Yes, sir. Because ecological tourism is an aspect of, it's an element under tourism. So, and uh, as far as the contribution of uh, trade and tourism is concerned to the GDP, just about 8%. 8% to the GDP. 
So what do you see? What we can do in ensuring that there is an increase in the GDP, in the GDP, one, Mr. President has just taken a giant stride. That is creating the Ministry of Tourism alone. That is a giant stride. So, and with the new hope agenda, my other minister has told me that he has already consulted with the Minister of Tourism. I believe we we'll work together to assess the facilities on ground, their condition, and see what strategy that we have been used in the past, whether we have to improve on these strategies or to design new strategies completely. And for us to do that, we have to bring everybody on board. You need the tour operators, you need the travel agents, you need the hoteliers, and of course, the uh, restaurants. So, and even the National Association of Road Transport Workers, that is transportation, you need them. So if we can all bring all these people on, on board, I believe we'll be able to carve a new way or champion a new course for tourism development in this country. Because um, as a stand, is it... Is the park open for general good, just like we have um, other parks? The national parks are open, okay. 247, for visitation, okay. except of for now. Okay. We have suspended activities in Kamuku National Park, Benungwari. Okay. We have also suspended visitors activities, when I say activities, visitors and tourist activities in Kamuku National Park, Benungwari, Kanji Lake National Park. In New Busa and Chad Basin National Park between Maiduguri and uh, between Yobe and uh, Borno States because of the security situations in these places. We do not want to risk the life of any visitor or tourist. So we have so temporarily suspended visitors and tourist activities in this area. But for other activities like research and uh, other forms of uh, cultural activities, because some communities still have their goddess and goddesses in these areas. We still allow them to, to come in and practice. Yeah. Okay, well, so just it, an enlightenment. Yes, thank you very much. For you to learn that fish is a wildlife, uh, it appears new to you. Maybe do I ask you, have you ever seen fish apart from this modern concept of a uh, fish farming bringing in fish by uh, bringing in fishes into fish ponds will you ever assume that you can just go to the river and catch a fish it's not possible, it's not possible. <laughs> so anything I can't take with ease. no anything that you do not manage you using human like uh, that anything that is not hand fed Huh? Any animal that is not hand fed, any animal that is not managed uh, by the hand of human being is wildlife. That there is no national park that does not share a boundary with either a forest reserve or a game reserve. And you know for some time this forest or game reserve have been considered as no man's land. They have been considered as no man's land. So unless we get the cooperation of the states and local government to be able to rejuvenate the activities of this forest and game reserve, there is no way National Park will not continue to contend with insecurity. So we need the buy-in of the state governors, the chairman of the local government, to be able to at least scale up their activities, their security, their protection activities in the forest and game reserve, so that whenever any invader comes in there, he finds a guard there, or guards that will repel him. When that is done, the National Park 
what you have said is by extension. Because this traditional use of Malamengadi is vested in the traditional rulers. So it is by way of uh, maybe constitutional review, uh, review of uh, edicts that have removed that function from the traditional institution to the, either the state or local government ministries of agriculture or ministries of environment. So, and in the ministries of environment, it is expected of them to employ their own game guards. So, a synergy between the Malamendaji and the game of forest guard, in fact, will help revive what we are looking towards to have sanity, at least security in this forest and game reserves. So I actually support the idea of bringing in, going back to this traditional concept of using Malamendaji because they are so vital, they have versatile knowledge about the area and they can sit down and tell you what could be happening in a particular area. Whether it is hunting, they know the hunting plots, they know the grazing plots. Eh? And they know the free zones in those areas. So I quite support that idea. Thank you very much. It's been an uh, exercise kind of one on the program Agri Today on this episode. As yes, we have told the National uh, Park Service here in the FCT located at the airport road. We have gone round, we've seen animals and yes, we have been told uh, uh, what the National Park Service does and how it affects uh, the nation. Today, I learned that um, even fish is being called a wild animal. Hence, if you are uh, having fish, you should treat them uh, very properly. That's all wrap it up on the program today. Join us again, same time, same station next week. From the National Park Service here in Abuja, I am Khadija Uluwatoi. I'm insane. Bye for now. And it's